Welcome to the SVG TV Evening News and Sports for Monday, December 9th. I'm Carol Cato and these are the details. The 2014 budget estimates will be laid in Parliament tomorrow and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez is excited about one of his new initiatives which will be presented, the Support for Education and Training Program, SET. Prime Minister Gonzalez said the initiative can be considered as a higher version of the Youth Empowerment Services YES program, adding that he is cognizant of the challenges faced by persons who have graduated from post-secondary institutions with degrees and are not finding employment. As such, he said over a million dollars will be set aside to employ close to 80 of these persons. I want to see if I could put aside, well, about a million and a half dollars to employ about 80 of them now. It's, it's a kind of a, I want to, to call it the, the, soap for the support for education and training program set. I want to set you up good. Because a university degree starts in the public service would probably get about three thousand dollars as a as a as a, um, an administrative cadet. Maybe you can pitch it twenty four, twenty five hundred dollars for somebody who comes on that program. Prime Minister Gonzalez also outlined the number of other projects that will be undertaken in twenty fourteen. He admitted that the estimates will run a small deficit on the current account, however he is confident that it can be managed. We have some good projects which are going to be funded by Petro Carib. For instance, about $2 million to help with Little Tokyo to fix it up. We have started, as you are aware, a company called the, the Farmers Support Company Limited. It's formed last month, a wholly owned state company. And we are capitalizing that first with six million dollars, and then there are the big programs: the 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 the, Vee, the Argyle International Airport. Then we have the BAM, the Banana Company in Measures, which is thirty something million dollars over three years. The modernization of the health um, sector. The budgetary estimates amount to nine hundred and eleven point six million EC dollars. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force is now fully equipped with a new fingerprint information system from the United States Embassy. Speaking at the handing over of the equipment to the Criminal Investigations Department, Acting Commissioner of Police Michael Charles says the new modernized equipment will help to enhance the work of the CID in its detection of crime exercises. I am indeed delighted to be the Acting Commissioner at the time when this event is taking place to Mr. Miller, my predecessor, he was initial in the, when it initial negotiation started, he was present. So I am very much uh, delighted to be here at this um, ceremony and I know that this equipment will take us a long way. And Christopher Sandrolini, the Deputy Chief of Mission of the United States Embassy, says it is an honor for him to be handing over the Digital Fingerprint Identification System, which is designed to help increase security across the Caribbean, provided directly to the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines under the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative. Over the last two years, the United States has worked hand-in-hand -hand with our Caribbean partners to reach this moment. The Bureau of International Narcotics and Law Enforcement at the Department of State in Washington and the Diplomatic Anti-Terrorism Assistance Program and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI, have all worked closely with our counterparts here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have also had similar cooperation and handed over similar systems in St. Kitts and Nevis, Dominica, St. Lucia, Grenada, and Antigua and Barbuda. As I understand it, here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the team has requested a cross APHIS search, which resulted in our first cross APHIS search with St. Lucia, leading to the positive identification of a person of interest on that island. This is a quick example of the fruits that the system will bring and a proof that the system is in fact working. Additionally, Sandrolini says the advanced fingerprinting system will enhance border security for individual islands and improve collective regional security throughout the entire Eastern Caribbean. 
Law enforcement officers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines will be better equipped to search databases quickly and effectively for fingerprint analysis. The system will enhance the fingerprinting process and support investigators at crime scenes. To ensure compatibility of the system and standardization of information across the region, we worked closely with law enforcement and the vendors, Biometrics for All and 3M Cogent, to put together this state-of-the-art system. Today is a great day, marking the conclusion of the first DFIS installation in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and I understand that it is operating fully between the police headquarters, Chateau Bel Air, Georgetown Police Stations, and the Grenadines Islands with the portable APHIS. In Antigua, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, Grenada, and Dominica, the systems are also running and connected with each other, and soon it will be deployed in Guyana, Suriname, and Barbados. We have worked together to make sure these islands could communicate with each other and strengthen the safety net across the Caribbean. A six-month consultancy project specifically designed to help build export capacity for businesses here officially came to a close earlier today in Kingstown. Project manager of the EP SVG EPA Implement Implementation Unit, Okolo John Patrick, says the broad objective of the consultancy is to contribute to and improve understanding of export opportunities open to small and medium-sized enterprises under the EPA, CARIFORUM and the CSME, and to work along with the business support organization to build their capacity. Now, out of this consultancy, we are expecting to develop export marketing action plans for the six businesses we are working with, two from the agro-processing sector, which is Vinci Class and Vinci Fresh, two from the health and wellness sector, which is Bamboo Spa and Young Island, and two from the entertainment sector, which is Island Network and, and Mark Cyrus Studio. Yeah, and we are all here today. The, the consultants will be going through their findings. We also invited the financial institutions because um, also business plans were developed. So from the next step, we are looking to approach the, the financial institutions and also the business support organizations who are expected to continue the process. And consultant Dr. Noel Watson of A to Z Information Jamaica Limited says the project was not only successful, but also exciting, providing the six participating companies a better understanding of how to best get into export markets. You know, but exporting is not easy if you're not ready because you have to meet international standards. You know, you, if your goods are not properly labeled, are not properly developed, um, not properly conceptualized, you won't get into the export market. Um, there will be many things that will prevent you. So what we have been doing is working with the businesses, um, looking at where they are, looking at some of the, the strengths, the weaknesses and the opportunities and the threats, um, and come up with, with business plans for them. We are very pleased to say that we have come up with a strategic document for the six businesses <coughs> that we've been working with. And the feedback from the business themselves is that they're happy with it. Because what it gives them is, a, is, a, is even a better understanding of their own business. I mean, we put together information that they gave us, but you know, did some research to add to it. So what they have now are nice documents. In fact, sometimes I wish I had one like that for my company. Meanwhile, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Foreign Trade, Commerce and Information Technology, Nathaniel Williams, says while much focus is now being placed on the export of goods, services are equally as important as income generators. Services have more intellectual property rights in a lot of cases than goods. Our artistic work, our paintings, our dancing, our culture, our culture is a package. And we need to move from thinking of our skills as simply a hobby to one of a business endeavor where we harness our skills and do well. So I said to us this morning as we look at an exportable good, an exportable, exportable package, let us think seriously about what we can do. Let us first of all understand how many European tourists come to our shores. Let us plan for our international airport that there would be increased volume of traffic of tourists, stay over tourists. Let us look at ways we may not have a, a 
performing arts building as yet. But we do not have to have one to begin to plan and to hone our skills. If given approval by the relevant authorities, the marijuana-based eye treatment from Jamaica can soon be found on pharmacy shelves here. In an interview with SVG TV News, Prime Minister Dr. Rob Gonzalez described the newly launched Jamaican product, Canasol, used for glaucoma as a very important step. According to PM Gonzalez, the drug was also developed by a Vincentian research doctor, that would be a Vincentian research doctor, Albert Lockhart. If it is approved by the relevant um, authority and whatever is the, the drug authority, the, the pharmaceutical authority in Jamaica or internationally, and it's approved for use, why not use it? The fact that some people may abuse the plant, the fact that some people may misuse the plant, doesn't mean that you can't proper, properly use it for beneficial purposes. As a result of his letter to that should be as a result of his letter earlier this year to CARICOM for open discussions on medical medicinal marijuana, PM Gonzalez says come twenty fourteen research findings will be presented on the medical benefits of the drug. We have decided at the CARICOM Bureau, of which I'm a member, that we would get we have mandated the Secretary General, the Secretary of CARICOM, to bring to the February meeting here of the CARICOM heads, the intercessional, I'll be the chairman from January the 1st, 2014, for us to see what the research said thus far. And I spoke to Secretary General a week or so ago, and he tells me that the work is ongoing and they've in involved the University of the West Indies in this particular exercise. Because other aspects would be looked at in addition to the medical marijuana side. Superintendent of Police Ruth Jacobs says one of their biggest challenges as it relates to domestic violence cases here is the fact that complainants do not follow up on their cases. Speaking on the Hit Talk program on Hits 103.7 FM on Sunday, Jacobs noted that oftentimes cases of domestic violence are reported to the police, but when the evidence is to be heard in court, the complainant most times backs down. She says this poses a big problem. Where the virtual complainant don't follow up, they don't come to court and give the evidence. You, you get um, nine stab wounds. Mm -hmm. And the person, the perpetrator is arrested and charged and taken before the court. That trial, the police did all the work on, on the case. And the trial is set for a few days within the, um, the incident. Mm -hmm. At the day of the incident, it's you turn up to yeah, court okay. and you go to the witness box and you said, I am offering no evidence mm -hmm. in this matter. Where does this leave the court or the police or even you the victim? Meantime, former opposition senator and associate director of the Thusian Institute, Anicia Batiste, says though violence on a whole may not be totally eradicated from society, education can help curb it. What they are, um, what, you know, what are the limits of the exercise of your rights and freedoms, tolerance, how to deal with if somebody disagrees with you or they don't like something or they um, criticize you, how to deal with criticism, how to respond legitimately, what are the illegitimate responses. And I believe if we could get this kind of education into our tiny thoughts from small, we're going to begin to change society over time. Mm -hmm.